Hello and welcome to the Mutual Fund Show on NDTV Profit. I'm your host, Neeraj Shah. In this edition of the show, we'll be discussing tax-saving mutual funds. The reason why we do this, because all through our history, even in the past as Bloomberg Quint or BQ Prime, we used to get in cost to Belarpurkar in the month of January uh, to try and tell us which are the funds that one should look at. Because frankly, by the time March comes, you are in a hurry, you might make wrong decisions. So it's good to know which are these funds that are best placed for tax-saving in the month of January and start making your plannings right now for the month of March. Ideally, though, as Kostub would tell you, you should do it from April for the next year. Kostub, great having you as always. Thanks for taking the time out and lovely to be doing this again with you. Thanks, thanks, Hiroch. And I'm excited to make my debut on NDDB Profit. Uh, thanks for having me. No, and the pleasure is ours. So, Kostub, just at the start, you would probably advise before we get into those funds that don't do this Jan, Feb, March. Do it from April as an SIP every month for ease of execution, I presume. Yeah, absolutely. I think, uh, you know, that's the holy grail to investing peer in tax saving funds or any other, especially on the equity side. Uh, make those consistent investments through SIPs. Uh, and obviously, we all know that the markets have been in this really good rally. And, you know, it just helps you avoid that risk of market timing. Uh, but yeah, I mean, for this financial year, you know, even now, you can stagger it over the next two, three months. Uh, you know, that'll be the best thing to do. But yeah, come 20. Uh, April 24, uh, make sure that you set up that SIP, you know, as an ongoing thing for the next financial year. Okay. Okay. So with that as a backdrop, Kostub, I just thought we have about seven or eight minutes onto the show, uh, unfortunately. Earning season issues, so you have to agree with that. But be that as it may, let's start off with uh, what are the funds or one by one. Let's say, let's mark three funds, Kostub, if you can, uh, which people can sure. look at and your reasons for the same, because that's how we've traditionally done this. Uh, uh, and these need not be in, in order of preference, or they could be as well. But let's start off with the first fund on your radar. Sure, sure. Thanks, Neera. So you know, I'm going to you know, very quickly cover off these three funds that we like. Uh, so first is the Mirai Asset Tax Saver. Okay. Uh, I think, you know, run by an extremely experienced uh, manager, Nilesh Sarana. I think, you know, they've obviously got a very good team set up and Nilesh kind of shepherds this fund, uh, you know, himself. And, uh, you know, I think he... You know, I think the strategy is really the key to the way they've, you know, the investment philosophy of the fund, what we call growth at a reasonable price. So good quality companies, but not paying very excessive valuations. I mean, that's, you know, the razor sharp focus that Nilesh brings to the investment process of this fund. Uh, he is reasonably benchmark aware, uh, you know, in terms of his allocations to sectors, but he'll take pretty active, uh, you know, stock calls uh, and, and look, like I said, for good quality companies with, you know, high ROCs and cash flows, and that'll really be, the way he will look to invest for, you know, multi years, right? He will build a diversified portfolio. Uh, and, and, you know, typically what you see in today's time and age, he's, you know, he's overweight uh, sectors, largely overweight, albeit, uh, sectors like basic materials, consumer cyclicals, industrials, and financials. Uh, you know, so I think that's the broad construct of the fund. It's not changed uh, over many, many years, which is, which is great. And I think, you know, obviously, uh, you know, it has paid rich dividends for investors in this fund, uh, you know, over the entire time period. Uh, so that's one fund that we really like in this space. Uh, the second fund that we like uh, is the Kota Tax Saver Fund. Now, I, I think in terms of construct, slightly different, but not, you know, not polar opposite, obviously. Again, a very, very seasoned manager, uh, Harsha Upadhyay, uh, you know, who was the CIO here to kind of manage this strategy. Uh, again, he is focusing on uh, kind of growth stocks at reasonable valuations. Uh, but, you know, again, like uh, Nilesh, he would pay an inordinate amount of attention to the quality of the management uh, in terms of the businesses that they're getting into. So, uh, you know, in terms of the capital allocation decisions and all of that, they would really look with the fine to nail and comb to understand which of the high quality businesses they want to invest into. I think this is probably slightly less diversified than the Mirai. Mirai typically runs about 70, 80 stocks. This is in the range of 50, 60 stocks. So, I mean, that's a little bit of a nuance that uh, obviously Harsha brings in with his style of management. Uh, but again, when you look at their top holdings, obviously they like a lot of banks. Uh, you know, there's Maruti, which is, uh, you know, one of the top holdings, L&T. So I think it's again geared towards, uh, you know, the 
kind of the consumer cyclicals, financials, and a little bit of industrials or weights that you would see uh, as a part of Harsha's portfolio construct. So I think these are, and again, this is a no specific order, but you know, I, I thought that'd be a good way to kind of talk about uh, two of the strategies. I think the third one, interesting, and it's made a very strong comeback. Uh, so this is the HDFC tax save, right? So I think uh, it's obviously been run, uh, you know, in the HDFC stable for yeah. I mean, many, many decades now. But the manager, uh, which is Roshi Jen, uh, I mean, she's new to the strategy, but she's not new to fund management, right? Uh, I mean, she's been managing this strategy for about two years. Earlier, she was running similar strategies in uh, Franklin Templeton for many, many years. So, so again, a very, very seasoned manager. And here, the style is slightly different. What Roshi likes to do, uh, I mean, she'll move down the curve a little bit. So while she will be buying growth companies, she will also focus a little bit on the value spectrum uh, of of and you know that's something which HDFC is a house also uh, under Prashant Jain's tutelage had really built that up uh, you know in terms of that uh, focus towards uh, you know sort of buying or identifying stocks early right so I think Roshi uh, maybe not as value focused as Prashant but you know kind of continues in that vein uh, in that in that stable right and what you would see is uh, which has been a style she likes to run concentrated portfolios uh, so typically you know between thirty to forty five stocks. Uh, so she would take, uh, you know, sizable sector and uh, sort of stock bets. So for instance, uh, right now, the fund is running zero exposure towards basic materials and consumer defensives. Uh, uh, so I, I think when you put all of this into context and really how the fund has, uh, you know, shaped up uh, over the last couple of years, obviously with the value bias, it has also helped in terms of more recent performance. Uh, but I think overall, a very good construct. And when I think about these three funds, I mean, they all bring their strengths to the table. Their portfolios, in a way, are uh, you know reasonably well diversified and unique. Uh, so you know, I wouldn't even mind if uh, you know if an investor were to pick a couple of these, uh, because you know the overlap between the portfolios is limited. So you are kind of diversifying by even buying a couple of uh, you know ELSS strategies. Because remember, it doesn't necessarily only need to be for your tax saving. You know, it is a flexi cap fund which holds about between sixty to seventy percent in large cap stocks and the remaining in mids and smalls. So it's actually an all weather portfolio that investors can buy. Mind you, it comes with the three year lock in, uh, which you should be aware of, but it also affords you uh, tax benefits uh, under the old tax regime. Uh, and you can buy over and above that one and a half lakh uh, limit that's traditionally available, right? Nothing stops you. So I think. It's a great space, uh, you know, great fund managers, differentiated strategies, uh, and I would definitely urge investors to think about it. And like I said, just set up an SIP, uh, you know, continue to invest uh, like you would do with all your other equity investments. And, and I'm, I'm sure it will be a very, very pleasing sort of outcome for you. Kostub, um, if a person wants to put in, let's say, the entire amount in these tax saving funds, would you divvy up between these three, for example, or would you give more weightage to one versus the other, if you will? Uh, maybe I'll pick two. So, you know, I spoke about the first two. Uh, and again, not playing favorites, but just of purely course. from the context of, uh, you know, of how these portfolios are structured, right? So, like I said, the HCSC tax saver is slightly different from the other two I mentioned in terms of the portfolio construct. So, I might pick one of the first you know, the first two, the Mirai and, and, and the Kotak, and maybe, you know, add an HCFC to that because you create, create diversification sort of, uh, you know, between that growth value spectrum. Uh, you know, which often gets ignored. Uh, so I think that's another way of kind of playing that out. So yeah, I mean, uh, I wouldn't definitely recommend buying all three, but yeah, you know, a couple of these, uh, including the HDFC, uh, ELSS yeah, tax, would be definitely a good idea to think about. Yeah, but most importantly, start an S. Do it for the month of March if you haven't, but start an SIP into that from the month of April, divide it up over 12, so that it's easy for you when the next season comes, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Great. Kostop, so good having you. Thank you for giving us this sense uh, and some interesting funds as well to work with. Apologies for the truncated show, but like I said, earnings season compulsion, so I had to do that. But much appreciate your time. Pleasure as always. Thanks, Tiraj. Yeah, the pleasure is ours. And viewers, you've got a good sense about tax saving funds. So if tax saving is on your mind for the current financial year, you've got 12 minutes of content with fund recommendations and the rationale why these funds could be interesting. I hope this was useful. Thanks so much for tuning in to this leg of the Mutual Fund Show.